Yo, what is good YouTube and welcome back to another JC2K video. Today we are going to be doing a NBA starting centers tier list, which is the last of the five tier list videos that I've made one a week over the last couple of weeks. Um, I really appreciate the support on these videos and uh, specifically on my 2K videos as well as of late. Um, my Michael Red gameplay and my unlimited rewards pack opening from um, last from Friday have done really well and we've gained like 50 subscribers in the last few days. So I really appreciate the support if y'all are new and have not hit that subscribe button yet. I would really appreciate it. We're about 70, we're about 70 subscribers away from a thousand. So if you could hit that subscribe button, it really would mean a lot to me. I would really appreciate it as we're trying to get to that within the next month or so. All right, so let's hop into this video and um, see see what we think of the centers in the NBA currently. Um, starting off this video with Aaron Baines. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put him in below average just because he's had a really rough year. A couple years ago, even last year, probably I would have put Aaron Baines in solid, but he has had a really rough year. He has shot the three so poorly this year, even from the field, he shot poorly. He struggles to catch the ball at times through the Raptors. He's not playing a lot of minutes at this point either. Um, and he just doesn't really seem like he's doing a lot on the basketball court at this point. He's not a great rebounder. He's not a great passer. And the fact that he just can't doesn't seem to be able to knock down shots anymore and seems to have lost a step. Not that he was ever particularly athletic or anything, but he seems to just have lost a step this year. And um, for that reason, I'm about to put him below average. Unfortunately, um, I was actually really looking forward to seeing how he would play on the um, Raptors. And just, I don't know. It just hasn't been his year. Next player on this list, we got Mason Plumlee, who has uh, really impressed me this year. He was always solid on the Nuggets and uh, I think Portland before that, but he's had a really solid year. Mason Plumlee's a guy who's he shot the ball pretty well. He doesn't shoot threes, but from the from the two, he shoots the ball well. He's averaging like almost a double double, I think, this year um, efficiently. He's had a couple nice highlight plays recently. He seems like he's a solid playmaker as well, um, especially for a center. Like he passes the ball very well. Uh, and I think overall he's a very good player. He plays in the Pistons, and admittedly the Pistons suck, but he's had himself a solid year, and I'm really, really honestly was imp have been impressed with the way that he's played on the Pistons this year. Uh, I think he definitely deserves to be a solid and maybe even an above average center in the league right now. Next center on this list uh, is Clint Capella. I'm going to put Clint Capella in above average. Clint Capella is one of those guys who's a solid defender, really good rebounder. He'll give you a little bit on offense occasionally. He doesn't shoot any sort of threes or anything, but he's pretty efficient around the rim. Um, and he's a great rebounder, obviously. Just a really solid all-around player, pick-and-roll guy. We've, we've seen his ability to catch lobs, play good defense. Like He's just a solid all-around player. He's a very good center in the league. Um, I don't think any team is hurting to have a center like Clint Capella on their team, and I think he does a good job on the... Um, I think he does a good job overall on the Hawks and has been a positive impact on that team this year. Um, the next center on this list is Bam Adebayo, and I am torn whether I put Bam Adebayo at all-star level or elite. There are a couple of guys that I personally would have slightly above Bam Adebayo right now, but I'm going to put, put him in elite. I, I'm going to put him in elite because I think he might be the fourth or fifth best center in the league right now. And he's such a good passer and playmaker as a big man. He scores something along the lines of 20 points a game. He's efficient. He can shoot the three a little bit. He doesn't shoot the three much, but he does have a really good mid-range jumper. And at some point, I would not be surprised if he does start attempting threes more often because admittedly he doesn't attempt them much, but he scores the ball well. He's a great rebounder, really good um, passer. Like I just think as an overall player, Bam Adebayo does a really, really good job uh, on the court. He's an amazing defender as well. He's one of the best defenders in the league at the center position. I think he is the most versatile, probably defensive center in the entire league right now. Uh, and I think his defensive prowess specifically is the main reason that I'd put him in elite, even though he's very solid offensively as well. And I think he's just a really good all around player. Um, Andre Drummond, I feel like I have to put him in above average, but there's a part of me that just wants to put him in solid because the thing is Drummond for all of his stats and admittedly, he's a great stats guy. He's the type of guy who averages 13, 14 rebounds a year, 16, 17, 18 points a year. Like he's or points per game. I mean, he's the type of guy who for the last several years has been a really, really good stat stuff for solid fantasy player, but he's not super efficient. He can't stretch the floor. Um, and he just, 
he doesn't I don't know he, he doesn't create for his teammates much he's not a great defender even though he does block a decent amount of shots he's not a great defender he doesn't seem to play super hard I hope he has a positive impact on the Lakers I think he can give you more than a guy like Marc Gasol can at this point in his career but I even putting him above average hurts me a little bit at times because I don't know how much of a positive impact he truly makes on an NBA team at this point in his career um Next guy on this list is Cody Zeller, who I think is just a solid all-around player. He's not, he's nothing special at all. I mean, he's he's either below average or average. I'm gonna put him in solid, just because I don't think Cody Zeller hurts your team by having him out on the court. He he plays his role. He'll play half the minutes and give you a decent interior score, some ability to uh, rebound. And I think I guess he can pass a little bit. He's not like the worst passing big man in the league. He's he's just a decent all-around guy. I think Cody Zeller is a solid NBA player. I think he probably deserves to be in the solid tier at this point in his career. Um, Wendell Carter Jr. Hmm, where do I put Wendell Carter Jr.? He just got traded to the uh, to the Magic, obviously in that in that trade for the um, for for Nikola Vucevic, obviously. And I am interested to see how many minutes a game he winds up playing. Uh, I'm going to put him in solid. I don't see think he's a below average guy. He has the ability to stretch the floor a little bit, which is something that a lot of these guys haven't really had the ability to do, it seems like. But he doesn't shoot a lot of threes. He's a solid rebounder. Good um, overall player. He's got nice some nice athleticism. And I think he's a solid defensive player as well. Admittedly, I haven't watched the, the Bulls a ton, and he has struggled to stay healthy his first couple of years. But I do think overall he's a solid player, and I think he deserves to be in the solid tier list. A solid tier on this tier list for sure. Daniel Tice, I'm going to put in below average. Um, Tice was getting outperformed by Robert Williams as of late in Boston. And he doesn't really, I don't feel like he's a great overall player. He does have the ability to stretch the floor a little bit. Um, he's not a great rebounder. He's undersized at the center position and not a great athlete. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's a decent role player, good solid bench center. But um, as a overall starting center, I think that he deserves to be in the below average tier, unfortunately, at this point. And I'm actually going to put Cody Zeller in that tier as well, just because I think there's a lot of other centers in this list that are better than Cody Zeller. I think he's one of the worst centers starting in the NBA right now. Um, the next player on this list is DeAndre Ayton, who, I'll be honest, there's a part of me that just wants to put him in solid. He's not, I don't feel like he's lived up to being a number one overall pick, but he's not a bad player. He has the ability to score the basketball a little bit. He doesn't do anything special. He rebounds as well. He's not a not much of a passer. Doesn't stretch the floor. But he plays hard sometimes. He's a solid player. Um, he shows at least a a capable ability to play defense at a solid at a good level as well. He plays with Chris Paul, which I think helps to a certain extent in terms of his offensive production. But he he's been a solid. He seems like he's almost regressed offensively a tiny bit this year in terms of his scoring. Um, but he is efficient, um, and I think he's a solid all-around player. He doesn't, he's not the type of guy who jumps off the page at you, but he's not like the worst number one overall pick of all time either. He's just kind of a solid center. I think he deserves to be an above average. I didn't, don't know why I put him in solid. I think he's on the level of an Andre Drummond or Clint Capella type of guy. He's just a pretty good above average center. I think above average is probably where he deserves to be. DeAndre Jordan, I'm going to put in solid, um, at this point in his career, DeAndre Jordan doesn't do much on the defensive end. There was a point in his career where obviously he was defensive player of the year type guy, averaging a ton of blocks and like just a really good overall player with the only Clippers. Uh, at this point in his career, he doesn't do much for you. He's kind of just a, a lob catcher, offensive rebounder, put back guy. Not even really a lob catcher much anymore, to be fair. He has always struggled at the free throw line, which is unfortunate for DeAndre Jordan, but he's gotten a little bit better in recent years. It seems like when he was on the Mavericks, he had a stretch where he was a really good free throw shooter. And same thing, I think, on the Knicks. And he seems to have regressed a little bit, but DeAndre Jordan's a role player. He's a solid center. I mean, he's I, I, I'm tempted to put him below average. I think the Nets are better with Nicholas Claxton on the floor. I think they're better with Blake Griffin on the floor. I think they may wind up being better with LaMarcus Aldridge on the floor. We'll just have to see what happens, but he's a really good leader. His teammates like him. And just overall, I think he's a solid center. So I'm going to leave him in solid at this point, give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, Joel Embiid, him and one other person are the easiest people in this list to put in a tier. And I think, I mean, I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put the elite centers in the elite tier because why not? I think we all know who the quote unquote elite centers are. Um, and then Adebayo and Rudy Gobert are are debatable. But 
Joel Embiid, Carl Anthony Towns, Nikola Jokic. Nobody's going to debate with me. That these th these three aren't elite centers. Embiid's an elite offensive player. So is Jokic. Jokic is one of the best passing big men we've ever seen in the NBA. And Carl Anthony Towns is one of the best stretch bigs and most versatile big men we've ever seen in the league. But Jokic, Embiid, and Carl Anthony Towns are just all incredible bigs. They're the top three bigs in the league. I don't think very many people will debate that. They can all stretch the floor, shoot the three, attack the basket. Jokic is incredible in the post. Um, Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns' ability to take other centers off the dribble is very impressive. And they both have phenomenal footwork. Jokic has improved a lot defensively. Carl Anthony Towns struggles defensively at times still, but Embiid is also a great defensive center. And um, I think overall, they're both, they're all really good centers. They are they're efficient they can shoot the three at a decent level they're just really good all-around players i think any team in the league would be thrilled to have one of those three guys as their center rudy gobert next guy on this list i'm going to put him in elite just because of the success of the jazz this year and this will probably be the last center that i put in elite um and i i know i, I think people may give me a little bit of crap for putting bam out of bio and rudy gobert in elite but for me personally i think they both deserve it because of the success that their team has with them on the floor Gobert is an elite, I mean, an exceptional defensive center. He is so good on the defensive end. People think they can isolate on him on the outside and attack him and go downhill, and it just doesn't work very well against him. He just blocks a ton of shots. His footwork defensively and ability to recover is incredibly impressive. He's not a great athlete at all by any means, but his footwork more than makes up for it. Um, and he just plays, he plays hard. He's a good rebounder. He's a good offensive, like, in interior threat. He's efficient. He's just a good all-around player. I think nobody's going to debate with me at this point that Jokic that Gobert's had a really impressive year and I think he really does deserve to be in this elite category of center. Serge Ibaka, does Serge Ibaka still to deserve to be in solid is my thing. Obviously on the Clippers he doesn't have a big role at this point in his career. Um, not even the role I would say that he had on like the Raptors last couple of seasons. But he does, he, I mean, he started every game he's played, I believe, for the Clippers this year. He is their starting big. And he plays a decent amount of minutes. He's relatively efficient. He has always had that ability these last few years to stretch the floor from the three-point arc, shooting at a decent volume. Um, he's a good rebounder. Gone are the days where he was, like, one of the best shot blockers in the entire league. He doesn't have that type of athleticism anymore. But... He, he still is a, a decent defender, not a great athlete by any means at this point, but he rebounds a little bit. He scores a little bit. He can stretch the floor. He's just a good all-around player. I think he definitely deserves to be in the solid tier. No team is hurt by having a guy like Serge Ibaka on their team. Miles Turner, I believe, is an above-average center. This tier list is going to shake out oddly, looking at the guys who are left, but uh, Lamar Lamarcus Aldridge is... I said Lamarcus Aldridge. Miles Turner. Sorry, Miles Turner is the best shot blocking big in the league this year. I think he's the leader in the defensive player of the year category. He's athletic. He can stretch the floor. He's not the most efficient by any means, but he ha does have the ability to stretch the floor on decent volume. He plays hard. He's really good on the defensive end. He blocks a ton of shots. He recovers really well and can switch out on guards at a very high level. I think he's one of the better, one of the better bigs in the league at, at guarding on the out on the out outside. And just overall, he's a really good player. He has made a very positive impact on the Pacers. And if the Pacers are going to make a playoff push and attempt to be competitive in the playoffs, they're going to need Miles Turner to continue to be productive, both on the offensive and defensive end of the court. Lamarcus Aldridge, Lamarcus, Lamarcus Aldridge, sorry, is um, I'm, ugh, it hurts me, but I'm gonna put him in. Does he deserve to be in below average? The thing about Aldridge is he's, he's lost all athleticism. Not that he was ever a great athlete, but he's lost um, some of his efficiency this year. Except he's not—he's still not a horrible, horribly inefficient offensive player. But he is a—he's a dreadful defensive player uh, at this point in his career. He does obviously provide sports floor spacing and post play. Still, you can still throw the ball down into him. He can go get you a bucket with a post hook or a post fade, make some moves. Offensively, he's definitely not a below average center. Defensively, he's a far below average center. Um, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put LaMarcus Aldridge in the in a category just because we haven't really seen enough of him this year and we haven't seen the role that he's going to have on the um, nets. So it's hard for me to judge LaMarcus Aldridge based off of just a few games that he played with the Spurs earlier this year and without knowing what his role is going to be in Brooklyn. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in the NA category at this point. Um, Chris Desprezingis, I think, is an all-star level center, especially recently. He started off the year poorly, just like he did last year, but recently he's played at a really high level. Um, he's been able to rebound well 
uh, he's, he had a game, I think, last week. I'm a Mavericks fan, obviously. But he had a game, I think, where he scored. He had like 30 some odd and 18. He's shooting the three much better uh, the last couple weeks. He's playing in the post better. He's using his size and facing up and attacking the rim on smaller players. And he's being able to back dude down the post, attack the rim on, on athletic centers. He's done a much better job as of late attacking them on the offensive end and just being able to be a complete offensive player and not not just a pick and pop stretch big the, on the defensive end he's also improved as of late he's done a really good job of not fouling is what i've noticed recently and he has blocked a, a, more shots as of late as well he's just improved i feel like and become more comfortable again in the Maverick system for having fully recovered from injuries and stuff like that. And I think overall, he definitely deserves to be in the all-star level center, especially with the way that he's been playing recently. So I, I think uh, that's where that's where Chris Porzingis falls for me personally. Mitchell Robinson, I think he just got reported out for the season, but he did give us an, a big enough sample size at this point this year, I think, to, to judge off of what he has given us. He plays a decent amount for the Knicks and is never a negative impact guy on the Knicks. He blocks a few shots. He's a decent athlete. He, I would say he's above average athlete, honestly. He's a pretty good dunker, pretty good lob threats. Solid rebounder. Doesn't really give you much on the offensive end outside of the paint and pit tip-ins, pick and lock, pick and rolls, things like that. Obviously, we've seen the offseason him, I think for a couple of years now, we've seen him in the offseason. Like, moving around, shooting threes and all that stuff and it never seems to translate he's i don't think he's ever has he ever attempted a three like, i'm not even sure if mitchell robinson has ever attempted a three but i'm going to put him in the solid tier i think he definitely deserves to be in the solid tier and i hope that he recovers speedily from his injury and is back next year and continues to improve hopefully rashawn holmes has had a really good year in sacramento and because sacramento is bad i think that goes gets underlooked at times but he is, uh, I mean, Mishon Holmes is a really good good player. He's a really good defender, too. He's a nice athlete. He moves his feet really well. A little bit undersized, I would say, at the center position, but not overly undersized. He's efficient. He has even shown the ability to stretch the floor a little bit from the mid-range and even the three-point arc occasionally. And watch, in me watching a couple of Kings games, I've seen that. He moves his feet really well on defense. He's a good shot blocker for his center. He rebounds well. He's just a good all-around player. I think he's really good. He's on my fantasy team. He makes a very positive impact on my fantasy team and that may may um distort my bias a little bit but i definitely do believe that he deserves to be in a our center especially with the way that he's played this year on the offensive and defensive defensive ends of the court mark gasol uh it's tough but i'm gonna have to put him below average mark gasol used to be a defensive player of the year caliber type guy he could stretch the floor score the ball at a high level and he just doesn't have it anymore he can't he's inefficient he can't move on defense he can't move on offense he doesn't really he just doesn't do much anyway. It's, it's unfortunate to see. It's kind of like what happened to Powell a couple years ago, where Powell went from a guy averaging 20 a game to averaging under 10 and just kind of falling out of the league. And this is the point in that career that I think a guy like Marcus Hall should consider retirement, unfortunately. As unfortunate as that may be to say. Um, but that's personally, I think, where we are with Marcus Hall's career. I do believe he is a below average center at this point in his career. Jonas Valanciunas, I believe, is again probably an above average center. Um, not having Jaron Jackson Jr. has hurt the Grizzlies this year for sure. But Jonas has been a really good rebounder this year. He scored the ball well. He does have the ability to touch the flow, which is always a valuable asset, even though I don't believe he shot the three all that well this year, as neither has John Morant or the Grizzlies in general have that have not been super efficient from the three-point art. But he he does a good job in his minutes. He's a start really valid starting center. I think he does a great job as a rebounder, solid defender, stretches the floor a little bit, can attack can can create himself a shot in the post occasionally i think valentunas is a very solid on player and a very i mean he's a good he's still a very good starting center has not regressed much if at all over the last couple of seasons christian wood y'all might have a little bit of an issue with me putting christian wood this high over some of these other guys who i have an above average but i truly believe christian wood's an all-star caliber center he's averaging something like 20 something points a game i know like 10 rebounds um efficiently shooting the three he has the athleticism to attack the rim i know he plays on the rockets and the rockets suck but even when the rockets weren't as bad at the beginning of this year before he got hurt he was playing really really well He's just a really good all-around player. He blocks some shots. He's a good defender. He's a great athlete for the center position. He's just a really good all-around player. I am disappointed the Mavericks had their hands on him at one point a couple years ago and 
didn't hold on to him and keep him because it would be a very valuable player to have next to Chris Stepps. Uh, Christian Wood is a guy who could play power forward or center, either one. He's just a really good, versatile all-around player. I think the Rockets have a couple of pieces, even though they don't look super promising right now. Christian Wood is a very valuable piece, whether they look to trade him or keep him and build around him over the next couple of years. But I truly believe he is an all-star level center, uh, assuming he can stay healthy. Brooke Lopez. He's a stretch big, which is crazy to think because Brooke Lopez several years ago was never a stretch big. But he does what he does. He's not a great rebounder. He's not a great defender, even though he does. I don't know. He's come on. He does. But he's not great at anything at this point in his career except for shooting the ball as a center. But he does that really well. He stretches the floor. He shoots with confidence. He shoots from deep. He gives Giannis and the Bucks floor spacing, which is exactly what they need, and he averages a decent amount per game. He's just a solid all-around player. I think he deserves to be in that solid tier of center, in my opinion. Al Horford, I'm going to put in NA, not because of because what we've seen of Al Horford this year. I think he deserves to be in the above average, in the above average tier. What we saw of Al Horford last year, somewhere between solid and below average. But the issue with Al Horford is they've taken him out of the lineup for the rest of the season. So. We don't really know what is going to happen with Al Horford, how his how his uh, career is going to progress at this point. If he's going to be traded or bought out, I don't expect that he will be traded. He can't be traded anymore, obviously, but I don't, don't expect that he will be bought out. I do expect he will probably be traded this offseason to a team that is a little bit more of a contender to play a bench center role. I think he's seemed a little bit reinvigorated on the Thunder this year. The Thunder are just a fun team to watch, and they do have that tendency of overperforming. And it's been, it's been nice to see Al Horford look like his former self a little bit more this year. But... That being said, we're going to have to wait and see what role he has in the future, knowing that he's not going to play anymore this year. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in NA because we don't really know what to expect out of Al Horford in the future. Yusuf Nurkic is another guy who struggles really, really hard to stay healthy. That's, I think, the biggest issue with Yusuf Nurkic. He's a good overall player, but his inability to stay healthy the last few years, we've barely seen him in the last two seasons. Like, I I, had, I do know, I do believe he's coming back soon if he hasn't already returned. I'm not even 100% sure. He may have already returned. But we have seen so little of Yusuf Nurkic as a healthy NBA player that I'm going to have to put him in NA as well just because we don't know what to expect. He's played so little. He's played, like, 20 games the last two seasons combined. Like... He's he, when he was healthy, he was a good defender, good shot blocker, rim runner, um, solid all around rebounder, just a really solid all around player. He was a great, a great mid level center, He'd be a guy and above average. But we don't know what to expect of him because he's been so injury prone as of late. And hopefully, he will, if he hasn't already returned, be back very soon and hope, hopefully, able to stay healthy for the Trailblazers playoff push. And then we can hopefully revisit this at some point and see what. Yusuf Nurkic has done and where he deserves to be placed at this point. But for that reason, that's where I would put Yusuf Nurkic right now is in that NA category. We don't really know. Thomas Bryant was an above average center before he got hurt. And he was having a really, really good year, like a breakout year. I, I really hope he recovers from the injury that he had. His um, He tore his ACL, I believe, in the beginning of... Was that end of end of January? But he was having a really good year before he got hurt. And seemed to be kind of emerging overall as a player i think he was turning into an above average center just a guy who could play the center position at a pretty high level he was a very positive ass very positive asset for the wizards um super efficient guy was shooting like 65 percent just it was unfortunate to see his acl injury i hope he's able to recover quickly and we'll be able to see him back on the court next season continuing to perform hopefully at that level that he was performing at this season before he got hurt steven adams i'm gonna put him in solid i don't think he really deserves to be much higher than solid unfortunately at this point in his career steven adams on the pelicans does not strike me quite as quite as positively as steven adams on the thunder um his inability to stretch the floor and shoot the ball limits their team just because like they have guys like zion who also don't stretch the floor very well eric Bledsoe is not a great three-point shooter that luckily lonzo has developed into a better three-point shooter but their lack of spacing has hurt the Pe pelicans at times this year and i think steven adams just, just isn't a great fit for a team with the pelicans with a lot of young guys a lot of athletes a lot of guys who can run the floor and they need more of an athletic floor spacing center to uh, be able to run the floor more and play 
a, I think a better, a, he, he just doesn't play the right role. He's a valuable player, but he doesn't play the right role on the Pelicans. And I think he would be better off elsewhere. And I think the Pelicans would be better off potentially looking to trade him this off season and looking to replace him with a younger, more athletic, hopefully slightly better shooting big man. Um, Nikola Vucevic is obviously an all-star, all-star level player. He does. He made the all-star season. I'm 99% sure. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he made the all-star team, right? If he didn't make the all-star team, that was a, that was a scam. But he's had a really good year in Orlando. Seeing him be traded to Chicago is going to be interesting because I'm interested to see how that works out for him. He's only played one game so far and they got blown out by the Spurs. But I think he's a really, really good stretch big he's one of the best shooting big men in the entire league he's relatively efficient from inside the arc as well his jump shot is super quick he gets it off over guys he scores the ball at a very high level not a great defensive center but not a horrendously awful one either he's a good rebounder as well he uses his size very effectively not undersized at all um I think he's a really, really good all-around player, and I think he deserves to be an all-star caliber center. I'm glad to see him and Zach Levine team up. I think they can be very, very da- a very big threat in the East at some point. They just need a couple more pieces around them, I think. Maybe a third star type of guy. James Wiseman, because he's a rookie, I'm probably going to put him in above average. If he was in his 10th year in the league and he's averaging the numbers he's putting up, you put him in solid, right? But because of his he's a rookie and because of the potential he has, I'm going to put him in above average. He has shown his athleticism. He has shown at times his defensive ability. He has shown even the ability to stretch the floor a little bit, shoot the, shoot the three at a decent amount, shooting like a three a game, maybe even a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure. But relatively efficient. He's a good pick and roll guy. He shows flashes of becoming a really, really good NBA center. I think some people are not giving him the credit he deserves because he plays in the Warriors and he got drafted in front of LaMelo Ball and like they're expecting really, really big things out of him very quickly, but that's just not the player he's going to be. He played three games in college. The fact that he's performing to this level, I think is surprising, honestly, considering he had literally zero Basically, well, not literally, but basically zero college experience at all. So for that reason, I think I've, he deserves to be an above average. He's been playing well this year, and I think he's going to continue to play really well um, and improve a lot over the next couple of years and become potentially an all-star caliber center within the next couple of seasons. Um, and I'm excited to see his future and hopefully his ability to develop other alongside other young players that the Warriors need for their future because we are getting to the point in their career where Stephen Clay and Draymond, like they're getting to the latter half of their career. The Warriors are going to have to start to develop some sort of young center talent at some point and not just young center talent young talent in general i think they have their center of the future in wiseman a guy who can be an all-star caliber center for like a decade or so so that's going to do it for this video if you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit that like button leave a comment let me know what you thought of this video what you thought of my tier list who you think deserves is too high who's too low um and where i ranked your favorite center um also, if you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button again. We're about 70 subscribers away from 1,000. I would really appreciate it if y'all could hit that subscribe button. Help me get to that within the next month or so. I'd love to get it by the end of April. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate everybody who watched this point, and I will have another 2K video for y'all very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.